It's a month or so. Digital living evangelist Lindsay Smith drops into Studio 4 to talk about cyberspace issues and update us on the latest apps, techno tools, and devices. She is the CEO and founder of Massive Media Inc. And it is my pleasure to welcome Lindsay Smith back to Studio Show and tell us more. Thank you, Fanny. A digital evangelist. Well, spread the word. It is. It's all about changing, changing the world one uh, iPad at a time. No, just kidding. <laughs> No, it's true, though, because uh, many people worship, as you know, at the foot of Apple mm -hmm. or iPad or iPhone. Is there a difference in your experience between Apple freaks and the others? And the others. <laughs> that is a great way of putting it. I think there's definitely pockets of different fans, uh, and Apple definitely has a strong following. But a good example of the others are uh, Google Android followers. And... Um, you're kind of familiar with this, Fanny. I think well, kind of kind familiar. <laughs> the Google Android follower, I'm not sure I know, but tell me about a Google Android follow follower so, and what that means. Google Android is a platform and operating system for mobile phones that is obviously developed by Google, and it can be put on several different phone types. So it can be on the Samsung, the LG, the Motorola. Uh, I believe there's some HT model, HTC models out there that are, um, that, and it's essentially like it, very much the way that the iPhone um, and the Apple OS system for the the iPhone has developed a large following because of the apps that you can have on the phone. Right. The Google Android has the same type of development atmosphere where there's out developers that are basically built all sorts of apps that will incre increase your smartphone experience or enhance that experience. So when I say that, remember I, sometimes I talk about my calorie counting app that I've had on my iPhone. Mm -hmm. There's that same kind of thing on the Google uh, Android phone. So when I read in the paper that is putting out a new tablet called Galaxy Tablet, which is going to compete with iPad, Exactly. What's that in the scheme of things? The scheme of things is that, well, there, you're going to see a lot of, uh, the tablets have been out for over 10 years, but what's different now about it is we're moving away from it necessarily being a PC or laptop tablet and more like a peripheral device to complement your smartphone and your laptop mm -hmm. or your computer experience. So Samsung has them, there's some other ones coming out, um, and they'll be able to give you your documents, your multi experience. Um, at, at your fingertips in a more convenient way. So, and the Samsung one, I believe it will be running on the Google Android platform because they're trying it out, okay. testing it out on different uh, uh, tablet formats. So again, you'll be able to have access. I think that Google Android 100,000 available right mm -hmm. now, and that's continuing to grow. And something really interesting uh, is that people often think that the iPhone has the market share right now, but if you actually look at the, the um, stats in the U.S., the Google Android is selling about 60,000 devices. 60,000 devices are sold a day with the platform on it and it's actually got the most market share right now in the U.S. And there's really? kind of this battle between, well it changes every once in a while, but I, I checked a couple weeks sure. ago and it seems to be, it's really given a Apple a run for their money. I'm sure, and there's a supply and demand battle as you know. People want the, the new G Phone, G4, uh, iPhone can't get it, lineups. Well, this Want is, the old one, can't get it. Absolutely. There's um, there, there's a lot of Apple fans out there that are really frustrated right now because they they want the phone and you're right, they can't get to it. So I actually just wrote a blog post a couple days ago about the Galaxy S, which has been released by Samsung. I tried it out. Uh, I broke my 3G. I dropped it, shattered the screen of uh, my iPhone a couple, <laughs> little while ago. Whoops. And so I, But I happened to have the uh, Galaxy S and out for a week, completely converted over to it. And I absolutely love it. Loved it, um, and it's it's currently out on the Bell network. It will be released shortly on Rogers, and later in the fall it will be released on Telus. And they have different models for right. each carrier. But it's a phenomenal phone, and the the feedback a little bit more technical, obviously, when I'm trying out these devices. So I enjoy having more freedom. Like the Google Android platform is almost like you've got to think it has a layer, almost like your desktop, where you can put widgets on it. You can have your social mm. feeds on there, so you can see your Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn updates in one, and then you can also update all of those sites all in one. So sure. there's aggregated feeds that are coming out. I was listening um, to Bro Jake this morning on the radio, the old-fashioned radio, and they were talking about tweeting, and somebody said, I don't tweet because I have nothing to say. That's fair. You know, you got to look <laughs> at it. Why did you quit? Like, yeah. I've got nothing to say. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just not that interesting. Mm -hmm. um, did you actually hear about the virus that uh, was launched this morning? And uh, it, it affected people out east no. uh, quite a bit. It was uh, someone hacked into the Twitter website. And it, essentially, anytime you rolled over keywords that this virus was affecting, it would launch uh, the virus into your computer. 
Luckily, by the time most of us woke up on the West Coast, we weren't, um, Twitter had fixed it. But it's it's interesting to see that that stuff mm -hmm. can happen. And it's just a reminder to everyone to always make sure you've got antivirus on your computer. Um, and to always be cautious when you see things that just don't sure. look right. As you know, education-wise, uh, even a premier, the Ontario premier, mm -hmm. has suggested we should have cell phones in classrooms. It's mm -hmm. the way the kids learn. It's how they're uh, absorbing information. And it's going to be the... The future huge controversy. or the present. Yeah, it is. There's huge controversy over this right now because obviously uh, you have a smartphone or you allow the, the kids to have laptops in the classroom. There's a bit of a distraction. There's the risk that they're going to be on Facebook and on other social networking sites that they're going to be together and not paying attention to the classroom environment. So it's a really awkward stage in the educational system, both for young kids right up to sure. university students, uh, trying to figure out how to create an environment where they can access this information on their laptop laptops and smartphones, and this is what Premier was saying, is that this is inevitable. It's going to happen. So we just need to figure out how to move through this awkward stage and teach um, y young people how to use these tools effectively and help mm -hmm. them understand that if they are so engaged in their and they're not paying attention to the face-to-face -face time that they're getting in the classroom, they are going to miss out on things. But at the same time, if we completely cut them off, we're, we're kind of... We're cutting ourselves off from an amazing sure, information Sure, you have to be source. with it, so to speak, but you also want to raise a child to think and as a critical thinker can solve problems and whatever that takes. Absolutely. Whatever that takes. When yeah. you read a book, do you read it on a Kindle or a iPad? I, I actually use my iPad now. I really mm. enjoy the process of reading um, off my iPad. I just, to me, is not, especially with news, newspapers and things like that, I, I find it very cumbersome to have to flip through all the, get all the gray ink on really? here. Yeah, I don't well, enjoy I say that. I'm old fashioned, obviously. And of course, I like reading in the bathtub. And I don't think you should read with your Kindle or your iPad in them, because what if it came in with you? Here's an idea you can get otter boxes, they're a hard oh. shell. Uh, yeah, it's called an otter box. It's a hard shell, and it wraps around your technology devices, and it makes them waterproof or more durable. It's, you can get different types of mm -hmm. them. Because if you're boating in the summertime, of mm -hmm. course, you're going to have your littles on the dock, that kind of thing. And so, get and get. Uh, obviously, the otter device floats. <laughs> Some of them do. <laughs> when yes. you think, well, it yeah. would make sense yeah. because if you drop yeah. your phone or yeah. your iPad in, in the water, you want it to float so you yeah. can pick it up. Uh, in the car, in the car, no cell phones, as you know, and no talking on cell phones, no tweeting. Uh, what do you use in your car, like a Bluetooth or a... I actually was using a um, Samsung headset for a while. Well, at first I had that mm. Motorola, like a little piece that uh, flipped in, which was good. And then I over to a... Um, mm -hmm. But I don't know, I can't remember what the model number is. And I liked it, and I liked the fact that I could go in and out of the car. But I always found it cumbersome to have to charge it all the time and take it... At, I had the car charger, but it was just, it's just sure. too cumbersome. So I recently switched over to uh, the Ver Bluetooth um, speakerphone in oh. the car, and I love it because it just stays in the car. I charge it when I'm driving. Um, there's no risk of me forgetting it right. anywhere. Cause I it's like the voice that says, Cow for Lindsay Smith. Yes, exactly. Cow. The nasally. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so Whoever does that is very nasally. Uh, I know. <laughs> uh, now, iPad, that yes. is yours, yes. right? Do you know apparently they're going to have them in restaurants down the road and your sommelier? will be in your iPad, like if you want to know more about the wine or go to the wine region Absolutely. or yeah. hear, read about the terroir before you drink the wine. You may not get a wine list, you may get an iPad at this, your table or true. some device like there it. There are so many different uses for these tablet um, tablet type devices and, and it's there's there's something to be said for face-to-face -face interaction when you're in a restaurant for being able to have that customer service but it's also to have accurate information at your fingertips which isn't always the case when you're mm -hmm. when you're dealing with servers and it depends on the restaurant another thing that's really interesting have you seen the new order yourself uh, kiosk stations in the A&W on Robson Street no oh it's so cool you walk in they only have two regular counters three order yourself uh, touch screens so you punch in your order you can modify your burger order whatever you want and then you go and pick it up at the window and you don't even have to talk to anyone which Gee. is awesome <laughs> well I don't know I have enough trouble at the bank I don't know if I can order a burger <laughs> so nice to see you thanks Ben nice to meet a digital living digital living evangelist with a swanee iPad <laughs> thank you Lindsay Smith and tomorrow BC Rivers Day is coming up. World Rivers expert Mark Angelo gives us an update on river restoration, thorny river issues, and takes us through some swift and unspoiled territory. And a professor has finished a new study on scholastic cheaters. He has results uh, that are quite fascinating and insightful. And photographer and artist Yukiko Anli shows us her latest work featuring some of BC's creative luminaries like Gordon Smith, Amari, the late Arthur Erickson, 
Thanks for watching Studio 4. There will be lots more on Shaw TV, only on Shaw TV.